Hey, this is Mosquito, also known as Chris. Welcome to the shop. And today we're going to make a box. This box. Not actually this box. We're actually going to make a similar box, same style, just slightly bigger. It just has a sliding lid that I've kind of beveled around its box joints. They're offset sizes, so there's quarter inch pins and I guess three quarter inch tails. The inside is finished with shellac and the outside has been painted and polyurethane. Probably making out of oak because it needs to be a little bit taller and my poplar is not that tall. So let's jump into it. So now we've got six here, 11 there, and time to grab some wood. It's not very dark, but I drew a pencil line all the way down this one edge. And the reason for that is because not really make it continuous grain, but I'm going to sort of try something on it so you can tell which side is which. And we will start cutting our parts out. First thing was to cut off the factory end just to get rid of any sort of weirdness there. And then I've got two different stops set up on the fence. The first one I used to cut the end pieces and then I flip the workpiece over to make sure that I keep the reference edge against the fence and then I engage the other stop so that I can cut out the long sides. I wasn't sure if I was going to go with a clear finish or painted so I made sure to do this just to keep grain continuity if I wanted it. The next thing was to go over to the router table with the box joint jig set up with the three quarter inch router bit and that was about a quarter inch spacing. So this is effectively creating the pins in that offset box joint. So the next thing is to go over to the router with the quarter inch and that spaced about three quarter of an inch and then cut out what is, I guess you would call them the tails since we have pins and tails even though they're not actually dovetails. All right, I've got all my pieces laid out here on the bench. So there's an inside, 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 inside. And what I found is after all that messing around with the setup and whatnot, <laughs> they're just a tiny, tiny bit on the tight side, but they were so close that I didn't want to mess with it anymore. So what I did last time is I just kind of cleaned them up a little bit and uh, well, just, Made them a little happier. <laughs> so I think that is what I'm going to do this time too. So yeah, just uh, talk amongst yourselves and I'll get back to you when I'm done. All right, so those are pretty tight still. It's gonna be really kind of hard to see, but there's some tight spots where I can see like this one is not bad, this one's not bad, that one's not bad, but a lot of these are still pretty tight. So I'm just gonna mark the ones that I want to clean up, especially that one, that's pretty bad. The whole spacing almost looked like it got worse until this one almost fits. And that one's pretty close too, so it's it's hard to say. But like I said, setting those jigs up, man, I I spent a ton of time working on those, and it was oh boy, was that frustrating. But I mean, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, so trying to set up that jig system, man, it was it's a lot easier if what you're doing is using it the way it's supposed to be, which is same size pins as tails or whatever. So your spacing is the same as your router bit. You only have to adjust one thing until you get it just right. So, I mean, that's not that bad, but it's it, trying to set it up to do this, especially with two of them. Oh, hang on. One down. Too many more to go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so having two of these jigs set up was, it was kind of a pain because you ended up having to make a little tweak on one and then that changes it so you have to adjust the other one and you're just kind of chasing yourself back and forth and uh, realistically i'm pretty sure i could have just cut some dovetails a lot quicker than trying to get that stupid box joint set up so i it i don't know if i'm gonna make a bunch of them I'm, maybe i'll spend an extra hour i mean seriously it took probably two ish hours maybe a little bit less of just putzing around with the stupid things and if i was going to make a ton of them yeah maybe it's worth it but 
I don't know. Anyway, let's get back to the box and quit complaining about that. And there you have it. Not really. Almost. Got a lot of it done anyway. All right, so this is kind of the neat thing about these that I've discovered is that since they're not dovetails, you can actually lay them out flat. So obviously I've got them all end to end where they're supposed to be. And this edge, because I used the wrong end of the block, oops. What happened is basically this and this both started a little bit too far away from that pin. So these are a little bit lower. These are a little bit higher. And the cool thing is, since they fit together like this, as long as you've got them jammed together real good, you can actually put them in your vise. Of course, that assumes that you've got a vise that can hold however long. I've actually got two on this particular bench, but what I'm gonna do is I've got the bottom side up, so I'm just going to plane these until, well, until they're all flush. There we go. We are flat all the way across. Obviously, you don't want to go too crazy because you don't want to take out your entire pin on part of it. But And since I'm trying to keep this as the bottom, put a line back. So I'll probably wait to do anything about the top until I uh, plane it down, or uh, cut it down rather and we can go from there. So next step, I'm going to remove my vices and I'm actually gonna plow a groove for the bottom. This is why I love this vise. Gone. This one, a little bit less fun. All right, so this is my bottom and unlike the other box, I'm going to make sure that the inside is, well, the inside. <laughs> I didn't do that last time and uh, whoops. That's really loud without headphones in. <laughs> All right, so now what I've got, plow plane set up with the quarter inch iron and I'm just gonna sight this because I don't have a straight edge. Just to make sure that this is about as straight as I can get it. Just because sometimes when you hit stuff with a hold fast, it'll move. There we go. All right. So now quarter inch set, about a quarter inch up from the bottom. And we are just going to plow our groove for what will eventually be the bottom panel. Okay, we are down all the way. The next step is figure out how high up we need to make the next groove. And then we need to cut the top of the box down so that it's the right height. Got this ripped to the right width at the bandsaw. Nothing special there, so not really gonna show you that. So now I just need to make sure that this edge is trued up all the way along. And it looks like maybe one more pass. Maybe two. There we go. So now, 
do the same thing, plow a groove, that'll eventually be for the lid. Groove is up. <laughs> Don't forget. You want to put those on the same side. Oh yeah. That explains why the grooves were so nice on the last one. We are fighting the grain. That would be a good reason to have the left-handed version. <laughs> So that is the four sides of our box pretty much done. There we have it. I mean, we've got a box with some grooves. So next thing is going to be probably making the bottom for it. And then we'll, I'll have to pick one of these ends, um, whichever one looks better I guess probably end up being the front and I'll just kind of cut this top piece off of one of these two so that the lid can slide out but I know you can't tell but it's 10 30 uh, that'll be a thing for tomorrow <laughs> see you then welcome back to tomorrow today now hey welcome back some things I did before I started shooting I just Cut a little piece of plywood, threw it in the bottom. Bottom. Perfect. Okay. Cut the front so it's just below the groove or pretty close to it. So this was actually the piece that I had cut as a spare and then screwed up. <laughs> this wasn't actually the spare. This was supposed to be the good one. And so cut it a little shorter and now this is going to be my new lid. I'm going to cut a rabbit around three sides. And then I'm going to do a little finger pull here and probably bevel the top. Just kind of make it look almost like a raised panel sort of a situation. But that's what we're going to do. So I have marked this out with the uh, marking gauge. And then I'm going to use the box maker's plow plane to actually cut the groove on it. So I probably should use a plane with a spur on it. But uh, yeah, moving on. <laughs> you can watch my review on this plane if you want to learn a little bit more about it, but basically I'm not too worried about it. And in case you actually are curious and you don't feel like going to look at my other videos about the Boxmaker's Plow Plane, the reason that I'm able to get away with this is because, well actually in that video I used a saw and cut it. Um, but what I did here is I just used a marking gauge that I was able to mark the edge with and then, uh, well, just pretty easily just use the plow plane like you normally would. And that's, that was enough to take care of it. Basically, I'm not that concerned about this because this is going to be in the actual groove anyway. But also I'm coming back in here to do another rabbit on both sides. So started out with this intentionally, but Again, because I used the marking gauge and took a light cut, I really wasn't that worried about it. So I'm just going to present this to the groove. That is pretty tight actually, but a good fit. So I think I'm going to leave that the way it is, because once I sand, It'll probably be a really good fit. curious why that side is a hair tighter. Maybe since I didn't actually mill this board down, it's possible that it's actually just a little bit 
thicker on one side or something. Maybe I should have checked that before I got there. And actually that's how I decided to fix this. So this is basically just taper planing. So I'm taking more cuts off of one side than the other since one side was tighter than the other. <laughs> so yeah, basically just kind of work your way across. And then after that, I just used a shoulder plane to make sure that my edges were nice and straight and 90 degrees. And also doing the taper cutting here just because it seemed like it might be a little bit tighter on one end than the other. So doing that on both sides and we will see how that fits in. There we go. That's much better. Length on it is good. So I'm going to get a vise installed and we'll bevel those tops and bottoms. And I'm just going to put a pencil line on there for roughly three quarters of an inch down. I think I'll take my block and we'll just start planing away. And the goal of this exercise, quite literally, is to basically I keep parallel to that line that I drew, but then basically manage the plane angle this way so that once I hit my line, I'm at a good spot here. I don't need it to go all the way to the tongue, but that's just something to eyeball, I guess. There we go. One nicely beveled edge. And then the goal on the next set is not only aim for your line, but try to make sure that corners meets up really nice. So. Got some funky reverse grain action going on there. Okay. See, that's not good. Yuck. So it must be rising up this way or something because it's uh, tearing out going that way right here, but tearing out right here <laughs> going that way. So, time to switch out to the uh, sand plane. That's all right, I had it pretty much to that point anyway. Really, I should have done this before I beveled that front, but hey, be smarter than me. All right, my square for basically an inch wide in total. And then after that, I'm going to set it for two and a half inches from the front to essentially act as a center line. Okay. So what I've got now is pretty shallow sweep gouge. And I'm going to basically mark on that or mark that line out with this, that one inch wide. And basically just start kind of scooping away into what I'm chopping out. Probably be noted that I am not a carver. I just pretend to be one on YouTube. Well, it's not perfect, but it's about as perfect as I am. <laughs> There's the box in tonight's state. 
but that's it for me. So we're going to have to pick it up tomorrow again. Sanding. I love sanding. Love sanding. I'm just trying to make sure that I actually come out here and work on it tomorrow because lots of sanding. I've got our box all torn down and I think instead of sanding all of it, which I was going to use a random orbit just because lazy, eh, I think I'm going to go ahead and plane them instead, at least first, and then I'll probably come back with the, the sanding block or the, the sand plane, as I called it earlier, uh, just to do kind of the final pass and whatnot. So yeah, wish me luck. Hopefully we don't make too big of a mess of things. May the grain be in our favor, but since this is going to be a lot of just planing and then sanding and whatnot, I'm going to let the time lapse roll and throw on some tunes and see you in a bit. everything else cleaned up and I had mentioned earlier that there these two are just a little bit off actually these aren't too bad but I'm just gonna use my black plane to clean that up to get these nice and even then we'll flip it over and take care of the bottom too So I have shellacked what is going to be the inside of the box. I was careful to keep it off of these pins and tails, I guess, if we're going to call them that. And I didn't put them in the groove or on the bottom because that's going to get painted and these are going to get glued. So just shellacked the insides of them. I also shellacked the bottom panel and the top panel. So those are done. In fact, I'm just going to set this aside quick. What I think I'm going to do is use some CA glue, thin. It's on its last leg, but I've still got uh, maybe a third of a bottle. So anyway, I'm going to use that. I'm going to assemble the box. And the thing that I found is with the other box that trying to get all the pieces clamped up super tight, it took a while. And I did a, kind of a test with that. and. I just thought, hey, you know what, maybe I can use, since I'm going to paint it anyway, I'll just use the CA glue to kind of wick into the joints, like two joints at a time. So I can clamp up one end of the box really good and make sure that it's all tight on all the corners and whatever, and then get the glue to wick in there, cure it, let it dry, and then switch all the clamps over to the other end. I just feel like trying to do it this way because it seemed to work. So that's what I'm going to do now. and. That's not terribly exciting, so I'm probably going to put this into hyperdrive <laughs> and we'll catch you on the other end. Oh good, our lid still fits. <laughs> that would have sucked. All right, so the nice thing about using the CA glue is one, it's fast, but also the blocks that I was using to kind of get pressure up near the fingers, I mean, it'll leave some glue behind, but if anything, it'll leave little pieces of pine, which are a whole lot easier to deal with than obviously ripping chunks of oak. Unfortunately, unlike the other box, my vices aren't capable of clamping 
that large of a piece. So I just have a little batten with the holdfasts and I'm just going to plane up against that. And at least for this initial part of it, that should be plenty good. So I just have a black plane set pretty shallow. And since most of what I need to do is on these kind of proud pins and tails, I'm going to clean that up first and then I'll come back in and clean some of this up a little bit better. I taped up the top because eventually I'm going to be spraying over this paint with polyurethane and then I taped up the bottom panel as well as put these two little runners on it and the purpose of those runners is to hold it up off the table so I can paint this part and then eventually finish this part but still be able to put it back down so what I did last time is I started with the bottom and I think I'm going to do that this time too. So we got the box all painted up and then I hit it with a gray Scotch-Brite pad just to kind of smooth stuff out. It is water-based paint, so I was kind of expecting it to raise the grain on the oak especially. It, you know, be the kind of thing that I have to apply the paint once, sand back all the fuzzies from the, the water-based part and then paint it again. But no, I just did two coats with it and it turned out really well, actually. I'm pretty pleased with that. I like the fact that you can still see the grain in it but it's all covered, so awesome. Next thing up, I'm just gonna use rattle can, polyurethane, fast drying, warm satin is what they call it. And I'm just gonna spray it, wait, spray it, wait, spray it, wait. So <laughs> I'm not gonna drag you along for that, but we'll be sure to check it out when it's done. I was just checking out the inside of the box. So I got done spraying it with the polyurethane and the inside, like I said before, was already shellacked. And the beauty of that is with that CA glue being clear, even if it did wick in, which I'm not sure if there's any spots that I see it, it's gonna be hard to tell because it's already finished. <laughs> Almost done. I got to take the bottom stuff off. I already took the tape off the top and the last thing I'm going to do is just kind of use a gold scotch bright so that I can use that to kind of knock off any dust nibs or anything that may have shown up in the polyurethane. So you have to let me know what you think. I know I like it, but uh, I know it's sometimes a little bit of a controversial thing if you're going to be, you know, going through all the trouble to make something out of wood, especially, you know, some people think oak and then just go paint it. But I really like the contrast between obviously the the dark painted exterior and I, I mean, you know, paint it whatever color you want, but I just love the contrast that that gives you with the, the dark box with the finished wood on the top. And I actually like it for both of them. I think if I had to pick one, I don't know if I could. That'll pretty much do it. So now I've got a place to stash my shop snacks. Really good, by the way. No idea what they are. Good. So anyway, in all honesty, though, <laughs> shop snacks are, are essential. But the plan is actually the, the smaller one is going to get some extra fixings inside of it. And it's going to be for the box makers plow plane. And then the one that we just finished making is going to end up being for the small plow plane. So if you want to see what I end up doing with the insides of the box, let me know. Maybe I'll make a video if there's enough people that are interested. Otherwise, I'll probably just end up posting it to my Instagram. And as always, thanks for those of you that stuck around. Hopefully you found something that you learned, something new, or at least maybe entertained for a little while. But I appreciate it nonetheless. <laughs> I will catch you in the next one. <laughs>